I think there's nothing in Chrome now that Brave does not have, but I think there's a lot of things that Brave has that Chrome just simply does not offer and will never offer. What is up, Hash Nation? Are you looking for a web browser that can truly replace Google Chrome in your life? Well, you should look no further than Brave Browser. Why, you may ask? Let's hash it out. Well, guys, I want to start this video off really quickly with something that's really, really, really important to me, and I hope that you can help me out with this. So over the last few weeks, I have uh, been mourning the loss of my grandmother. I was super close to her. She was one of the bravest people that I knew, one of the most influential people in my life. And over those few weeks, I've been reflecting, taking some time off from videos and so on and so forth, so I can find a way to really pay tribute to her and honor her memory. My grandma was one of the bravest people I've ever known. She raised four children during wars, throughout the turmoil of economies, and while her husband was away fighting in battles overseas. And to celebrate her influence and honor her memory, I wanted to start a social media campaign, and that's where you guys come in. Would love for you to post on Instagram or on Twitter, even post a YouTube video telling a story and honoring someone that you know that's in your life, that's influenced you, or that's been truly brave in your eyes. Uh, whether that be a grandparent, a friend, a parent, a sibling, just someone you saw on the street doing something truly brave, truly fantastic. I want you to honor them and hashtag the post brave like them. And I want to see your stories. I'll share them. We'll talk. We'll have a conversation. And for all of those posts, I'm going to donate a small amount of money to the Sarcoma Foundation SFA, Sarcoma Foundation of America, to celebrate my grandma and donate to cancer research. So if you want to be part of this movement, I would be really, really, really appreciative. Uh, it's just a way for me to celebrate her life and honor her. So thanks so much in advance for those of you who are going to post and I will be on the lookout. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Now diving into the Brave browser, the browser in my opinion that has officially overtaken Chrome in terms of its overall usefulness and human centered design. Many of you have probably seen my 2018 Brave review when they surpassed 4 million active users. Now they are well into the 5 million active users mark, probably even closer to six at this point, and continuing to grow over time and adding all these new features that I think you will really like. There has been a lot that has changed since 2018 and my review back then, lots of new features, lots of new things coming into the mix. And beyond that, there are a lot of new ways that you can interact with a Brave browser and even earn a little bit of extra money on the side. Now, for those of you who aren't really well acquainted with the problem with Chrome, first of all, it's a very data hungry machine. When you're using Chrome, it's collecting information about you all the time, constantly. And it's not just Chrome, it's websites that you go to, but Chrome doesn't sit there and protect you from those things. You can add on ad blockers, you can add on tracker blockers and all these different things, but they're not native to the browser and some of them don't work that well. But beyond that, Google Chrome is a really power hungry thing on your computer. It takes up a lot of juice to run. We all deserve better. We deserve a browser that doesn't track our every move. We deserve a browser that's more human centric, more human centered. And we deserve a browser that has native ad blocking, tracker blocking, something that just makes our browsing experience less invasive. And so that's why I've officially switched over to Brave full time on all of my computers. I only use Brave for just about everything. There are a few little niche cases where I have to use Chrome to access some sort of developer tools that I'm using to build mobile apps, whatever. But those things are even coming over to Brave at a rapid pace. Now, overall, if you want the TLDR, the too long didn't read, I recommend you go check out Brave Browser if you haven't already. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can do so in the referral link down below in the description and the pinned comment. It's a fantastic browser. If nothing else, download it, start to use it, import your Chrome bookmarks. I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video and just start using it. Tell me what you think. Be very curious to see what you have to say. If you wanna learn more about Brave, what features it has to offer and why I have switched and why I'm full-time on Brave, stick around in this video. Whole lot of really great content coming. Let's jump into it. First of all, for those of you who have no idea what Brave browser is, Brave is a feature-packed mobile and desktop web browser that is built 
from the top to bottom with ad blocking and tracker blocking native. And beyond that, it also includes connection to a really innovative cryptocurrency based platform called Basic Attention Token and the Brave platform, which is revolutionizing the way advertising is done and the way that you can get paid for viewing ads, the way that content creators can get paid for their paywalled content and just contributing to the overall community, so on and so forth. Brave Browser's mission is to give the control and the power back to the user. You, the person who is using the browser should be able to tell whether or not they wanna see ads, whether or not they want to be tracked using cookies, whether or not they want to see invasive pop-ups and things showing up when you're just trying to see the sports news on ESPN. These sorts of things are no longer in our control using traditional web browsers, and Brave is looking to change that. Brave came from the genius minds behind Mozilla Firefox and the father of JavaScript. Those two gentlemen's names are Brendan Ike and Brian Bondi. Brendan Ike is actually the father of modern JavaScript, and that is the coding language that really runs the internet these days. And Brian Bondi was actually a co-founder of Mozilla who created the Mozilla Firefox browser, which of course is an honorable mention. A lot of people really like it. And so do I, it's a great browser. So obviously the pedigree behind the team, the creators of Brave Browser, they're all there. And to be honest with you, the features are really starting to flow in 2019. And they're delivering on a lot of the mission statement and vision items that they laid out early on in the project's inception. So when you open up Brave Browser, you'll notice that familiar material design theme that you see with Google Chrome. And a lot of people were wondering, well, if Google Chrome is based on Chromium and now Brave Browser is based on Chromium, doesn't that mean Brave is just a copy of Chrome? And the answer is no. The team behind Brave made a calculated decision to move from Muon, their original architecture, over to the Chromium base. And when they did that, they were thinking everyone uses Chrome because they like the way it looks. They like the user interface. They're familiar with the way that Chrome works. And Chrome is now the de facto standard for everyone browsing the web. So they decided, why would we build on something? We're gonna have to convince people to like our user interface. We're gonna have to convince people that they don't need Chrome extensions, but rather, we'd rather just take advantage of all those users that already love this and build our applications, our services on top of the Chromium architecture base. So essentially what the Chromium base means for Brave is that it has the same user interface and the same browsing components as Chrome, but it does not have all the tracking and spyware and overall really sneaky stuff that Chrome does in their browser. First and foremost, because Google Chrome and Google themselves are not gonna give away the secret sauce to how their platform works. The architecture Chromium that Brave is built on is basically just the base layer on which all the Brave stuff, all the ad blocking, tracker blocking, Tor browsing, etc., was built on top. So you have nothing to worry about with the Chromium architecture move. It's totally normal, it's totally okay. And any Chromium browser that is out there today does not mean that it is tracking you the same way Google is. Now, I mentioned just a minute ago that Brave Browser is all about giving the control back to you, the end user, the browser of the internet. And Brave does give you full control over what websites you want to enable ad blocking on, what you want to enable tracker blocking on, where you want to disable JavaScript altogether so no applications that run in your browser will actually start up without your permission, or they just won't start up at all you have full control over almost every component of your browsing experience. So if you go here to this button on Brave, this is where your shields are. This is where you can enable ad blocking. You can disable ad blocking. You can do all sorts of things. And this is also a place where people have been asking me questions. They say, well, I'm using Brave and I go on YouTube and nothing's working. Everything's just blank or gray. And the reason for that is because most of the time your shields need to be modified. It's likely because you have the JavaScript switch turned on. And that means that you're blocking all JavaScript running in browser. YouTube runs almost exclusively with JavaScript. So you have to turn that off so that the scripts that run the whole platform can run in your browser. So if you're having issues with YouTube or another website, the first place you go, go up to those shields. You have control. You can decide what you want here and you can modify to make those websites work better. Furthermore, another reason why Brave moved to the Chromium architecture is because so many people rely on Chrome extensions. I, for one, I use Grammarly, the plugin in Chrome and now Brave that allows you to check your grammar on the fly. It's really easy when I'm writing out a post or writing out 
a blog post or a comment, that it catches little grammatical errors that I might make along the way. And that's one of those things that I couldn't use in Brave before, before they moved over to the Chromium architecture. So now when it's on the Chromium architecture, Brave is able to take any of the Chrome extensions that you use, including any Chrome extensions, for example, like Trezor, which is another one that a lot of people use. If you wanna use your hardware wallet, you need that Trezor bridge extension on your browser. So obviously now Brave can handle that, which is a great feature. And another feature that I really like on Brave browser is how they took incognito mode to the next level. So obviously in Google Chrome, you can open up an incognito tab and all that really does is it doesn't register your web browsing traffic into your browsing history. It doesn't mask you, it doesn't really protect you from anything. But now Brave has introduced something called Tor Private Browsing. You can open up a Tor browser. For those of you who don't know what Tor is, essentially Tor Browsing is a way to mask and privatize your internet traffic by masking your IP address, overall protecting your identity while you're surfing the web. So when you open up a Tor Private Browsing window, it runs natively in the Brave browser architecture. And what you can do is you can go ahead and search on the web using DuckDuckGo it's a search engine competitor to Google that doesn't take everything you type and track it and parse it and collate it and use it to target you for ads. It doesn't collect any information about you. It's just a search engine. So you can open up a Tor browser with DuckDuckGo and search the web more privately. Now, granted in these Tor windows, because it is masking your traffic and routing you around, it is not as fast as browsing traditionally on Google and without Tor browsing. So just keep that in mind, but it's a great feature for those of you who want to privately browse a little bit more. But finally, the crown jewel of Brave Browser, in my opinion, is the basic attention token ecosystem, the, the Brave advertising platform that they've introduced and allowed all sorts of new revenue streams for creators, all sorts of new revenue streams now for people who want to view ads and it's a fantastic platform overall. Brave recently released Brave Rewards and Brave Ads. And what Brave Rewards allows you to do is it allows you to log into your Brave browser, set up a wallet to hold basic attention tokens. And basic attention tokens are really the currency of the web, that's the idea. Advertisers can pay you in basic attention token to view ads. Then you can pay your favorite content creators in basic attention tokens to thank them for all the hard work that they put in to create valuable content. And beyond that, then advertisers get to target customers who want to be advertised to, not just customers who hate ads and are gonna skip it after five seconds. As an advertiser, I want someone who is engaged that's looking to buy something, that is looking to participate and wants to be advertised to. Truly, that's what makes Brave Browser unique. It flips the entire advertising model from the internet on its head. It puts the user in control rather than the advertisers and the people who seek to just violently inundate you with ads. So I mentioned just a second ago that you can get paid by advertisers, theoretically, to watch ads. And that is the case, that is 100% true. Brave has pushed this feature called Brave Ads into its beta browser, its de development browser. And I'll show you how to download that and have access to this feature later on. This feature is coming in full to the browser, the main release, as soon as possible, but they're running tests and you can get paid now to view ads you download that Brave Dev version. What Brave Ads basically is, it allows users to opt in to view certain types of ads. So you have, again, control over whether or not you wanna see ads. But if you choose that you would like to see ads, the Brave platform is going to serve you up certain advertisements through the course of your browsing experience. But what's not going to happen is you're not gonna have a video pop up in front of your face when you're reading an article. You're not gonna have a, an image swoop in in front of your face while you're watching a video. Rather, you're going to have a pop-up in the bottom right corner of your screen in the notification panel, and it's gonna say, hey, there's a, an ad ready for viewing. You can either approve it or deny it. If you don't wanna see the ad, you deny it. No harm, no foul. But if you approve it and you watch that ad and you interact with it, then you will get paid a small amount in basic attention token. That is a crucial part of the ecosystem that people are able to get basic attention tokens without buying them, but rather for viewing ads, viewing content, and then using that to pay their favorite content creators. And it creates this nice triangle between advertisers, content creators, and consumers. This is why I really love Brave Browser because not only are they making the browsing experience better, they're giving you ad blocking, they're blocking trackers, they're allowing you control over almost everything. 
all out of the box with no pay to play features, no extra stuff. You don't have to download an extension to block ads. It's all just built in right there. But beyond that, they've built a brand new economy for internet content into the fabric of the browser. All of this happens natively. And so in the future, I really do envision millions and millions, if not billions of people using this browser in the entire economy of the internet running through a platform like this. And that's what's truly special about Brave. They're not just creating another browser that people will download, they'll like it, but then they'll eventually go back to Chrome because there's no real killer feature that makes it different. Brave ads, Brave rewards is what makes this different. And as a content creator, I put in a lot of work to make this content. I don't charge money for any of it, but there are people who are always saying, hey, I'd love to send you a little bit of a tip. You know, they can send me Bitcoin, they could send me basic attention token, and it just makes it a lot easier for me to interact with my community as well, because I like to pay for content as well. So I can go to another channel like BitBoy's channel or Crypto Candor and tip them in basic attention token for all the great work they're doing. So I really love this feature. I really love that Brave Browser is building the Brave ecosystem with basic attention token. There are a few interesting details about this Brave Ads platform that I think you need to know. Now, first of all, the matching of advertisements is done on your device. And I think one of the things that people really questioned when the idea of Brave Ads came out is, how are you gonna match me with ads if my information, my identity is never stored on a server somewhere for you to match me? And the answer is, Brave is shipping all the ads straight to your device so that the matching happens on your device. So it's not happening on a server somewhere. That way your data is never exposed. All the logic happens on your device. So that's one really solid thing for privacy. They did think about that. Then next, I think the profit sharing perspective here is that Brave is a company. Brave, the company needs to make money. So yes, they are still gonna take a cut of matching the advertiser with the user because that is an essential part of this whole business ecosystem. Maybe in the long term, they won't need to do that, but the numbers are way better than the ones you get with Google. In the Brave ecosystem, the user that's viewing the ad gets 70% of the revenue in basic attention token. The Brave platform, the company, they get paid 30% of the basic attention token. So the lion's share of that profit, that revenue goes over to the end user, the person who is really making the sacrifice to watch that ad. And Brave has made a verbal commitment to the world essentially and all their users that they will never take more of the spoils than the user. It's all about the user and them getting the real reward for their time and their attention. So if you guys wanna try out Brave Ads and you wanna get paid, and I think right now you can get paid an average of $70 per year using Brave Ads. So it's not a huge amount of money, you're not gonna make a career out of it, but it is $70 you didn't have before and it's a great way to test it out. I'm sure that that will improve over time as more advertisers jump on. But if you wanna do that, you just need to download the Brave Dev version and I will show you right now how to get that Brave Dev version. If you go to brave.com slash download dash dev, you can get the Brave Dev version and it's essentially just a continuously updated version of Brave Browser with some of the new features. They come there first to be tested, to be worked with. They're still pretty stable. I've really never had an issue with dev being in, unstable or being weird, but once those features have been tested and users give the okay, then it goes to the stable version, which is the one that you can download in the link down below in the description and the comments. Question of the day, guys, have you used Brave Browser? And if so, what is your favorite feature? I'm gonna go ahead and put a YouTube poll above in the card, click that, let me know what you think, or leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. So obviously Brave and Basic Attention Token are ahead of the times in terms of how they're revolutionizing the way that advertising and content creation and then the consumption of that content is done on the internet. And I truly do believe that Brave Browser is going to continue to be successful, gain market share, get people to use this platform as this ecosystem builds up. Once Brave Ads becomes large enough that people can really get paid a significant amount for viewing ads that they choose to watch, then they can pay for paywalled content that creators create, for example, online courses, etc. That economy of the internet is really going to start to blow up and catch on some traction. And like I said early on in this video, I think right now Brave is at parity with Chrome in terms of what the offerings are for the product and the features therein. I think there's nothing in Chrome now that Brave does not have but I think there's a lot of things that Brave has that Chrome just simply does not offer and will never offer. At the end of the day, you can add an ad blocker to Chrome. 
It's an extra thing that has to run your browser. It's an extra extension. And it's another hack fix to a lot of the problems that Brave solves natively. I'm not alone in this thought. Recently, the co-founder of Wikipedia just went on record saying, De delete Chrome, download Brave, use Brave. There's no reason not to. It's innovative. It's amazing. I totally agree with that. Look, there are other great browsers that you can download. Vivaldi is great. Opera is pretty good. Mozilla Firefox is even pretty solid. There are other options out there, but I think Brave is the most complete competitor to Google Chrome in terms of features, in terms of security, in terms of privacy. And look, there's a long way to go. Brave isn't perfect. There are issues. They're going to face more issues in the future because building an amazing product is not a straight linear curve. There are going to be bumps along the road, but they've delivered an amazing amount of work. They've delivered a really solid project in a pretty short amount of time. For example, just recently, Brave released a feature to sync across your Brave mobile apps and your desktop applications across all your devices. I'm gonna show you that in just a second, but that's just another feature that people were saying, hey, Brave doesn't have this. I'm sick of having to manually share things between my devices. Brave listened, they delivered, now we have sync across all of our devices. So guys, in my opinion, there's no reason why you shouldn't switch over to Brave or at least give it a try. If it's not for you, no harm done, no foul at all. Go ahead and switch back to Chrome or whatever browser you're used to, but I highly recommend you do give it a shot. And if you do give Brave a shot, you're probably gonna wanna move your bookmarks over from Chrome to Brave. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go up to the settings panel in Google Chrome, go to bookmarks, bookmark manager, and then once you're in that bookmark manager, you can select export bookmarks from the menu option in the top right corner. When you export those bookmarks, it'll allow you to save it as an HTML document and you can save that wherever you want. Once you have that, you go into a Brave browser, go to the menu, you can go to bookmarks and then select import bookmarks and settings. Once you do that, you can go in and select bookmarks HTML file you go to choose the file and choose that Google Chrome HTML document that you just created from your Chrome export. When you select that, it will very quickly import all of your bookmarks from your Chrome browser, drop it into Brave, and you're good to go. And once you have your bookmarks, you're probably gonna to wanna to set up your sync feature so that you can get your iOS or Android version of Brave browser set up as well. So let me show you how to do that really quick also. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your desktop version and go to the menu and select sync. It's gonna bring up this page here, start a new sync chain. You're gonna click that button there and select phone tablet. So it's gonna be looking for your iOS version and then to scan this QR code, you're gonna to wanna to go into settings on your iOS app, go to sync beta under other settings, and then say, I have a sync code. Enable the camera, and then scan that QR code to enable the sync feature. So then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see on your screen your sync chain. And this sync chain basically is just a list of all the devices that have access to your sync feature. So once you have sync set up, your browser is also going to show, yep, sync is all good to go. And whenever you are searching, you add a bookmark, whatever, everything's gonna sync across all of your browsers and you have that feature ready to go. Of course, this feature isn't required. You can choose whether or not you wanna sync your devices. I personally don't necessarily want sync because I like having two separate browsers for my phone and for my desktop, but it's obviously up to you. The control is yours. So guys, overall, all of these features that you've seen in this video today are some of the things that make Brave really special. These are some of the things that I really, really like about Brave browser. Just for example, going to cnn.com and not seeing all the crazy ads everywhere. Really, really, really great. But beyond that, I think when you download Brave, you will find your own features and the things that you like the most about Brave, and they might be totally different than mine. I think the best thing is, is that because you have all the control, you can make the browsing experience truly yours. And in 2019, Brave has delivered a ton of new features and they're gonna continue to across the rest of the year and beyond. So I highly recommend you download the browser, give it a shot, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And guys, I really appreciate you watching this video and I would appreciate it even more if you watch some more of my content. There's all sorts of things about Brave and my ever-growing list of Token Talk Tuesday videos where I break down different cryptocurrencies and the platforms behind them. Thank you guys so much. Cheers.